what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel as you guys saw we just swapped out the um, tarp for the carport here you guys saw the last one was completely destroyed from the cat you know jumping on it from the roof the wind and also being uh, you know that it's been on there for quite some times and I normally change this out after like maybe a year and a half because of you know the sun kind of making the material brittle uh, it's not that expensive to change uh, it's really not that expensive to even build one of these I know a lot of you guys have asked me about uh, where we got this from now the pole I believe these are like one inch poles that you can buy from Home Depot and uh, the joints the joints we bought it from a canopy shop which is across the street from our house but some of them we had to make ourselves. you can see it right there um, to get that slant right so when the rain comes it just drizzle out that way instead of sitting and causing a big pool right here so now that this has been changed out um, we're gonna worry less about the noise that it makes when the wind comes through and uh, we can also work here the winter season is coming the rains coming but having this up it's not gonna stop me from wrenching on my cars so today in this video I'm not sure what we're gonna get into but um, there are a few things that I want to address with the CRX Thank you to Red Zone for tuning the car like last minute um, because we had to fly him out from Hawaii and he was almost able to squeeze 10 cars in the three days that he was here. If you guys have seen the track video, uh, the car did an 11.4 at 110 miles an hour and now I know what I need to do as far as improving this car's performance. The very last pass, I ran slicks and uh, cut a 1660 with uh, granny shifting second gear and having to go into fifth gear because the transmission is super short in gear ratio but there are a few things that i need to address with the car one is the boost by gear with all-wheel drive it's going to hook up and i need to up the boost in second gear if you guys saw the video second gear kind of fell out of boost and then it came back in third and fourth is 25 pounds and then it picked back up which is why it went to 110 miles an hour in just a little bit i'm gonna have this car backed up and on jack stands i want to show you guys the exhaust actually sits on the rear axle and it rubbed out so much that it caused a hole in the muffler that's one of the things I need to fix. Um, I also noticed that after a few passes, my catch can would get filled about half, but because of all the blow by the pressure during a pass, it actually shoots out of the filter and uh, gets all over the engine bay. So I had to double up the uh, microfiber on the filter because it was spraying out everywhere um, at the track, but um, it doesn't do it now. It's only after a few hard passes that it'll you know, come out of there. So. Um, I may put a bigger one right here just to, you know, have the, 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 the fluid sit more lower, maybe even baffled or something like that to prevent it from happening next time. And the one that I want to do for the block, probably the same style as that one. I do have brand new filter uh, materials and everything to make another catch can. Probably going to put it right here and then two lines go into the back of the block. Now the B20 VTEC that's in the storage has the fittings on the back of the block and the lines are chilling right here. So... Not really big of a deal to make one, but I just need another one. So I was reading some of the comments and you guys were saying that you'd be annoyed of the rattling, which is actually my twin disc. That E85 start. So that rattling you, you'd only hear it when I'm stepping on my clutch. That's the competition clutch twin disc. I actually kind of like it. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it sounds like there's a loose motor mount somewhere. So today I'm going to have the car on jack stands and um, tighten up every single boat I can get to in hopes of getting rid of that uh, that vibration noise. It's coming from the back.
guys i don't know what it is with me working in the dark um i think i'm just used to it and then i just kind of forget like when i start recording for you guys it's freaking dark but i have the car on all four jack stands and um obviously i'm going to check all the bolts everything in the front but the main reason why i have the front up is because i want to I want to relocate my O2 sensor. Now, if you guys saw the video where I was making the cutoff, I added another bung for the O2 sensor um, right here, which is about eight and a half inches from the uh, turbo itself. And uh, Jeremy was saying that it was re reading all kind of weird. So he threw his Y band when we were on the dyno to the bung that's in the back, uh, right there. When we tuned the car, it read off the reading from that location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my wide band to the back because uh, it only makes sense that if the sensor is not faulted out, I should be getting the correct reading the car was tuned from with it uh, installed in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply break this loose. This little tool right here for the O2. It's super handy if you don't have a crescent wrench or a wrench to fit in the area of where your bung is at. And there you have it. This one's just a broken O2 sensor. Use that as a plug. So, the back side of my car. Boom. Oh. Oh, it's gotten a lot worse. Holy snap. Yeah, that's a lot worse than uh, when it was at the dyno. What the fuck? Lucy, god damn it. I thought it was a snake. <laughs> wow, that's a lot worse than uh, it was at the dyno. And that was making all that noise. Um when I was driving home, the, the weird humming, rotating noise was the muffler sitting on the rear axle. How am I gonna patch that? I did wanna raise the rear up a little bit. I also wanted to loosen up the preload so it could squat a little bit more. And obviously right now with the car up in the air, it has a giant wheel gap. Uh, I'm not trying to go that much of a gap, but obviously we have a good clearance between the axle and the muffler. I do want to adjust my ride height a little bit um, and I'm not sure if I can go up any higher on my muffler because we are kind of maxed out and um, you know what I'm gonna continue tomorrow I hate having to show you guys all of this in the dark all right guys so it's early in the morning and I'm out here earlier than I usually am so we have two extra hours to you know get some work done uh, but before we get working on the CRX I'm gonna open these package with you guys. I picked up these packages a few days ago and they've been sitting there since the 12th. So it's been probably sitting there for a total of eight or nine days before I got to it. So, okay, these two small packages. This one came from Giovanni, I-G-E-K underscore decals. And I'm gonna assume that these are decals. Holy moly. Yo, before I dig into this, follow him on the gram, EK underscore decals. It goes, hello, Daniel. Love the content. Keep up the good work. Thanks to your video, I've learned a lot about my car. I'm sending you some small samples of my work. I just started a small business not too long ago because too many people out here are charging a lot for decals. My IG, EK underscore decals. Maybe we can work together sometime. Oh, yeah. Shout out again, EK decals. Let that sit there for a minute. <laughs> Yo. Yo, hold on. Yo, somebody sent me a three pack Kilimer glass protector for G9X, G7X. I didn't even know they have protectors for uh, cameras, but yo, this right here is definitely gonna help the LCD on the G7X. Um, 
I'm not sure who sent it to me, but I truly appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's definitely very much needed given that uh, my last camera was completely broken. So this is gonna come in handy. Thank you very much. This is the first box, the smallest one of the two packets from the same person. Um, I believe the name is... Come on, Vatos Locos. <laughs> so if I'm reading this name right, um, I believe the name is John. This is an ECU. Yo. RSX Type S ECU? What? With a giant hole in it? Oh, this is the mounting location for the ECU. What in the world? Here we have a ton of badges. Yo. Yo. Yo, this is legit. Look at this. All wheel drive. Hell yeah. This one's got a lot of little things in there. Or a lot of rocks. Given that this is a reused box, um, his name is definitely John. So, John, thank you for the first package. Let's see what's in the second one. Oh, we have a motor mount. Um, Integra 3 post motor mount. A ginormous looking motor mount. More shot rags. Yeah, that's a backup camera. What? There's just a lot of little things in this box. And uh, this right here is stuff that I can use because I just bought this for the CRX. And uh, it's, a, it's a toggle switch. We have an Integra cluster with a chrome bezel. A whole bunch of coal packs. Not sure what make and model, but a lot of them. Had to change my battery, guys. That was a lot to unpackage. Uh, thank you, John, for the care package. A lot of this stuff I can use, most definitely. Everything else, you know, I'll find something to do with them. And, um, you know, thank you for taking the time to send out this package. There was two of them, and the postage was kind of up there. So I appreciate you for that, for taking the time to do so. Thank you to the person who gave me the uh, screen protector for the G7X. I'm definitely gonna put that to use. Probably throw one on the camera right now, but um, also shout out to EK Decals for taking the time to send me a sample pack. Truly appreciate it. I think I think this is ready to be peeled now. All right, hit them up, EK Decals on Instagram if you guys are looking for stickers. What I decided that I'm gonna do um, today I'm not going to adjust my suspension ride height because I don't have my 24 and a half here to know how much I have to raise the car in the front and in the rear. But I do know the front has to come up. When I had the 23s on it at the track, it was scraping the front pretty hard. So I need to raise the front, um, you know, accordingly, but I don't want to raise the front uh, until I go to the storage and grab my 24 and a half because I want to make sure that when I adjust the ride height, the front and the rear is going to clear the 24 and a half. And uh, I'll do that at another time. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pull out the shocks on both sides. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna undo the preload a little bit. So that way when the car launches, the car will actually squat and uh, get more like weight on the rear tire. So we can just hook up and book it instead of spinning it because the car is too stiff. So I took the shock off to kind of show you guys um, like what I'm going to do as far as loosening up the preload. But the thing is, I took out the shocks and I noticed that it was already loose sitting in here. Now when this spring is preloaded, this, this thing doesn't move at all. Now I watched the video of the launch from yesterday and the car does squat a little bit. So that's good. I'm just going to give it a little bit more, probably about a quarter of an inch gap. Somewhere there. It's 
something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in the car. I'm gonna match it to the other side. Now, because I didn't get to adjust my ride height today, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the Cheddar Auto Shifter for the stock CRV shifter box because I took the car to the track and uh, the throw is super long. I'm not gonna give you guys no bullshit excuse. I missed second gear like two times. And uh, the funniest part is when I drove to the track, I actually hit one, two. Um, all the way to the track and and it goes in the gear. It's it's just I can't find it at the track I don't know what's the difference, but um, Do want to get rid of that long ass throw and that angle? I don't know if you guys can see that angle It actually hits my leg when I shift so I want to get rid of all of that uh, Craziness with the stock CRV shifter box and shifter. So I have this three inch um, Leftover pipe from Carlene's up pipe since I built him a new one. I tried to cut somewhat of the same like angle as uh where the holes at on my exhaust system so i can get the curvature right so when i slap it on it's um flush and i was able to get it flush so you can see the holes right here this is my patch slides over like that and all i gotta do is clean it up all around and uh tack it slowly one by one the stainless steel ebay exhaust system it's really thin so i don't want to burn through that just gonna go ahead and just weld it on slowly. Uno, dos, tres. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these cables and uh, take the shifter to the table. Okay guys, so here we have the stock CRV shifter box with the weird angle. You guys can see how it kind of curves like I'm showing you this way it curves towards my leg imagine me sitting over here and you see how off-center my hand is to the, the center of the shifter I'm not using this as an excuse to miss gears um, I just miss gears and it, it, it's really close to my leg when I try to shift so one of the reasons why I want to install this is to swivel that angle away right to make it straight and also the height so this is the Cheddar Auto short shifter um, adapter mod thing for the CRV shifter box and I was talking earlier about how I didn't like this being aluminum because I've heard reviews from people that this breaks under heavy shifting this controls the uh, the neutral um, this guy right here this, this little neutral lever which goes side to side and I don't see why it would break but then again it's really soft aluminum like it's super light and I'm afraid that it may break under heavy load. I heard some people got theirs with a steel version, which I don't understand why this is aluminum, if it was steel before, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I have no instructions to this. I haven't even looked on YouTube to see if there was an instruction on it, but um, by the way it looks, I feel like I'm going to have to punch this pin out right here. I took a long 10 millimeter uh, bolt and um, I punched out this pin, right? Not all the way through, still on there. And this came up, it wouldn't flip over all the way because the shifter is in the way. So then I took out this little weird like clip thing right here on the other side of the shifter and the passenger side. And that, that released this pin right here, right? Now this should come all the way out, like so. And I still don't know how to take this guy off. This guy right here is like the same style the windshield wiper arms to the motor is. Oh, I spoke too soon. So that just came right out. I'm not sure if this is supposed to come off. Um, I think so, because this one has a, has a ball on it as well. So now, um, I guess that's pretty much it. Hmm. Carefully remove these two guys. We're gonna reuse this 
I'm not sure how to take it off without breaking it. All right, well, it's simpler than I thought. I just pretty much kind of lightly grip it and just slightly pry it. And it just slips right off. And there's that stock shifter. Take this piece off for now because we don't need that. We just need this section right here. And I need to wash my hands because all of the grease that came off the stock shifter. I'm gonna go ahead and slap one of this guy on right here at the bottom. Woo! Do the second one right here. Just like that. Now the cool thing about this is you can adjust this rod with the shifter already installed until you get your preferred, you know, your throws as far as your shifter throw goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just match it to the stock one for now, and then I'll adjust it inside the car. I'm gonna put this sucker back on. This rubber thing was on it as well too. I'm just gonna slide that back in. This goes into the shifter, simple as that. I'm gonna go ahead and toss the whole lever assembly back on. Remember to um, preload this spring right here. Gotta make sure it's in between that right there. And I think that's pretty much it. Go ahead and uh, connect these guys back. Take your pin, hold that in place. This plastic top piece goes on like so. Slide this pin all the way through, lock it in place. You wanna go ahead and knock this pin back in. that's pretty much it so reverse the process guys put this little clip back on right here to secure this pin into place and then reinstall back into the car put your shifter on adjust accordingly take it for a drive um, right now I'm pretty much going to reinstall this reinstall my console put my wheels back on and then um, we'll, we'll try to take it for a drive and and see how it feels maybe we'll do a review video later but right now, I just want to get this all put back together because we are losing the daylight, guys. So, um, that's hustle. I also forgot to mention there's a little set screw, which is to lock this guy into place because obviously you can spin it, right? And the set screw is to lock the ball, the pivot ball, to uh, the rod here. And I've already lost it. Well, I lost one of it. The kit... The kit comes with, there are four, five, holy crap, there's a lot of them. And um, the set screw goes right in the middle of this guy right here. It's important to use blue Loctite in case it backs out. I had people message me and tell me that beforehand, and I appreciate y'all for that. So this just goes right in the middle like so, and you just set the screw pretty much. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it right there. So you can't turn this no more. That's what the set screw is for. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it loose because I still gotta make adjustments. All right guys, so I'm just gonna go cruise around real quick. The throw is definitely a lot better, for sure. Damn guys, that was one hell of a drive. I did like 14 miles. I was supposed to take one exit and come back, but I, I jumped three different freeways. But um, yeah, my first impression, I, I'm i digging it. And uh, after lock tightening everything and tightening up all the set screws and the shifter not having a ton of movement, the throw is a lot better. Um, it doesn't hit my leg anymore. It feels normal, you know what I mean? And um, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm also going to carry the stock one in the trunk uh, just so that 
if this snap for whatever reason it's easy to change it out you don't actually have to take off the shifter just the two pins on the top and the cables and that's pretty much it but the battery's about to die guys i hope you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe if you guys want to see some more things happening with this car and all the winter builds to come don't forget to hit the like button so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace